presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Let's go to uh, John in Orlando. John, what's going on, brother? Good afternoon, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. I want to tell you, I've been listening to you since your radio days back in 99. Appreciate what you guys do. But what I really enjoy that you brought back to or this guy is as smart as a whip. I am so happy for that feedback. Yeah, because he's one of a kind. He's got to be the number one market timer. I'm telling you, it's like he called it really, really he, good. He does. I really appreciate the feedback, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is actually Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I thought he was going to be back today. I said that on Friday. Uh, so I'm with you today, and I'll be with you again tomorrow as well. Well, let's take a look and see what we have going on right now. I hope you all had a good weekend. I know today uh, not too much is going on, uh, but let's just take a look. So we have the E-mini right now, about sideways, off about 0.04%. Uh, we have the Russell up about 0.37%. NQ's 0.17%. The Dow futures still right under that $40,000 uh, mark there. The gold contract down today 1.35% at 2342 Silver at 2845 And copper is raging today up 2.16%, trading at 476 on that contract. And on decent volume as well, at least uh, on May 10th to that upside. Uh, crude oil creeping right now to 79.16. Tesla is up today. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit, up about 2.3% as it is now at 172. Uh, I spoke on Friday how Elon had made a Twitter post or an X post, uh, <laughs> essentially saying that they're reeling back his initial kind of stance or the newer stance of getting rid of their, their hypercharger unit, or at least, you know, just keeping it bare, right? Then he said on Twitter, he's like, no, 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 we're gonna dump more money into this, so don't you worry, we're just cutting down the amount of people. And uh, today, it turns out that he's completely reeling that back, and they brought back the executive as well of that, um, of that section. It's, uh, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> It is a strange thing with the stock and really with Elon in general. Uh, let's see, Musk said it's still planned to grow the supercharger network just at a slower pace for new locations. And that the company would additionally focus on 100% uptime and expansion of existing locations. Yeah, he said this Friday, this is the quote from his Twitter page. Uh, just to reiterate, Tesla will spend well over 500 million expanding our supercharger network to create thousands of new chargers this year. That's just on new sites and expansions, not counting operations costs, which is much higher. And they brought back the guy today. Anyways, it, you know, I mean, what can you say, right? This is what's so sketchy about investing in Tesla is one, you know, Musk says what he wants and to, you know, some extent, I guess, in a world that sees consistent, like, self-censorship, that is nice. But you also got to keep in mind, this isn't just, like, some random celebrity. This is a dude running a mass business, one that is uh, public. And so you get these kind of weird moves uh, surrounding it based on, you know, maybe he's just chilling by himself at home and he sends off a tweet. And it greatly affects the stock price. And so, you know, that, that in and of itself can be a massive issue. Uh, additionally, some numbers came out as well for uh, April Chinese EV sales. Now, this is one of the places that Tesla sells their vehicles, and they were dominating the market for quite a while. Uh, that is has actually contracted quite a bit, uh, which is pretty negative for Tesla. BYD, we've been speaking about them a little bit. Uh, they are the dominant EV automaker in China currently. Um, they blew up this year. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of resulted in Elon Musk saying, if we don't do something about China, they're going to flood cheap cars throughout the rest of the world. I mean, we're seeing one. I'll, I'll get the story uh, for you here, but it's like a $12,000 car. 
this isn't BYD, it's another brand, but it just kind of goes to show this is what's happening. And, and again, like this was to kind of be anticipated, right? I mean, even this happened, you know, decades ago, moving jobs overseas, but it's like, of course, China was going to become a dominant force. And it's not like we, I feel like our country really did anything to develop relationships in a major way over all this time. And now we're getting to a point where we're going to levy a 100% tariff on Chinese EVs. And there's no doubt that China is going to do something retaliatory as well. And we're in an unstable inflation environment. Anyways, I'm kind of going on a you know, side note there. But regardless, let's take a look at BYD quickly. The sales of the retail passenger and EVs totaled 254,000 units in April. Uh, it's up 30% year on year, which is insane. And now Tesla's contracted 21.4%. Uh, so they had 674,000 units sold in China in general. Tesla only made up 31,000. That's in April. 674,000 in April, and China or Tesla only sold 31,000. So they're contracting quite a bit, and this is a big deal. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. If we take a look over here at the screen, we're at TFNN.com, and we're going to scroll down just a little bit. we got a bunch of things to select 
from however. I'm gonna take a look right now at Mastering Probability. Now this is from our man Steve Rhodes. He is on at 11 a.m. Eastern Time every day. Now, if you're looking for a newsletter that really gets into the nitty gritty about a bunch of stuff, right, and I'm talking, it is thorough. This is the newsletter that you want. It is, uh, like I said, I, I read these newsletters all the time and uh, I learn so much just about what's going on generally in the market. For Mastering Probability, again, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee uh, for all new subscribers. I strongly recommend checking this out if you haven't already. Steve Rhodes, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jake. How about yourself today? I am doing well. We're getting that uh, Florida heat rolling back in, aren't we now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was you know, too good. <laughs> yeah, yesterday my wife said on Wednesday it's supposed to be – he. Um, how are they how are they calculate what the actual it feels like oh out yes there? yeah yeah like, yeah like 120 or something uh -huh. <laughs> uh, i don't know if she was pulling my leg or what have you but uh it's still pretty decent you know i still i got out and played golf yesterday morning and it was just fine Love but it. we are getting we are getting you know it is what's may 13th so yeah we're getting basically <laughs> <laughs> Basically, all the snowbirds are out of here, so we know that the heat is coming. Exactly. Quickly. Yeah, it's a good yeah. indicator, right? <laughs> so. Totally. Totally. What you are know, we looking with, at with, today, Steve? Well, you okay. know what? I'll tell you what we'll look at. Uh, May, which is the month that we're in right now, yeah, May yeah. is normally a down month for the S&P 500. And so we take a look at this chart periodically. This is a chart that is or a tool put out by the folks at Seasonex. And what's really great, I used to do some of this stuff manually, and I'd have to dump everything into a spreadsheet and then try to align days um, you know, of the month. And uh, what's really nice, these guys have done it all. So I'm able to, uh, t this here that we're looking at, folks, this is a chart for, and they, I think they have a 30-day trial or seven-day trial out there. Uh, and so if you'd like to understand seasonally what typically how an instrument performs out here, then this is a great tool for that so what we have up on our screen right now is a 96 year average price average for uh, from january to december how price moves you don't really take a look i don't take a look at it as the depth of a move just really looking for where price typically turns out here and and for the month of May, if you look at the bottom right hand portion of the screen you'll see that uh, typically february may and september are the three worst performing months mm. uh, for the S&P 500. When I say worst performing, they typically have a negative return. And what's interesting here is Mondays typically are the worst days of all uh, over over an average for 96 years. So we can see here, oops, sorry about that. What we can see here is that uh, the, the S&P, if it held to the exact seasonal process, should have formed a top uh, last week, maybe around Tuesday, Wednesday or so. So we're beyond that. And of course, this shows that we uh, would see a bottom form towards the end of this month here, maybe in another week and a half or so. But over the last 96 years, May is tough. So I'm still in search for a top out there. Mm -hmm. So when we take a look, when the S&P 500, when it topped in July, so first, just a little frame of reference, when I take a look at these tools, and as you said, I'm pretty thorough. I believe the way you do anything is the way you do everything in life. Think about that yeah. uh, and, and then kind of apply that to uh, folks that you know or even yourself out there. And so, yeah, absolutely thorough out here. And so I don't want to just put forth an idea without being able to have some evidence for people to make their own judgment. So when the S&P 500, 500 topped in July of 2023, the S&P 5, the SPY, so the ETF for the S&P 500, the equal weighted ETF, which is RSP, and then the actual S&P 500 index, what they each did is they generated one of the patterns that we teach here. The, this pattern was taught to me by both Tom and Larry Pesavento, and it's the A to B equals CD pattern. I refer to this as a sell the D point top. And the way that that occurs, so we can see the A to B equals CD patterns out here. And for me, the way that a top is identified is as price approaches price target levels, we see bearish reversal candles. And that's exactly what we saw across the board for all three of these on July 27th, and that clearly led to a top. If we take a look at the top that formed in the S&P 500 in February, February 2nd of 2023, what we'll see here is that the SPY, the RSP, and the S&P 500, 500 index, don't worry, I'll get it out, they all generated TD9 count tops across the board. That's one of the patterns, as you know, that I teach uh, folks. It's one of the patterns that we use to help identify the markets and for good reason out here. So that's the past. If the S&P is going to top again, then we should see confirmed tops for the daily time frame for the S&P 500, for the ES Mini, for the SPY and the RSP. And folks, this is really how you would put this together with a seasonal pattern. So a seasonal pattern says, hey, on average, we should make a top right around uh, May the 7th, 8th, something like that. 
Well, you don't just take that carte blanche. There's no need to. We teach patterns here that help us identify when an instrument is likely going to top. So if we are going to see a top again, we should see confirmed tops in in the S&P, in these instruments for the S&P 500. As we speak, and this was a snapshot, uh, Jacob, from about an hour ago, yeah. there is no such top in place as we speak just yet. Now, we could get something over the next couple of days. There's the A to B equals CD pattern. We do not have a bearish reversal candle. Look, there's still time left in the day. For that to take place but as we speak right now we don't have that top in place if we take a look at the ndx 100 if that is going to top again so i want to just shift from the s p 500 jacob move over to the nasdaq 100 we should see confirmed tops for the daily time frame that's what we're looking at right now for the ndx 100 for the equity future contract the nq for the q's the etf and for the equal weight qqew again this is a snapshot from about an hour ago it uh if we were to see a bearish reversal candle then each of these would form a top today but that was not the pattern that's in place and what that says folks is that price may continue to move higher you're still waiting for and looking for um some type of bearish reversal candle to confirm that at least sellers are now ready to try to uh, force their muscle if we take a look at the um the dow if the dow is going to top again we should see confirmed tops for each of the time frames now in the case of the dow this is kind of interesting the equity future contract that's the one on the very left hand side folks both the friday high and low were exceeded as long as the dow equity future contract closes one tick to the downside this is a confirmed sell the d point pattern that candle would be referred to as a key reversal bar jacob and we would have that same thing inside the dow jones industrials the cash index out here in this case here the cash index did not form an a to B equal CD pattern, nor did the Dow Diamonds or the equal weighted. What they did was they generated consolidation patterns. And those are the little squares or rectangle boxes on the screens there. And once you get that consolidation, when price breaks through a consolidation, it usually does a measured move. And in each case here, well, at least with regard to the, the cash index and the equity and the future contract, they both made a more than a measured move. In the case of the equal weight, it's only made a measured move. So we're watching, or I'm watching for bearish reversal candles here because we may get a confirmed top inside of the Dow equity at inside of the Dow today which would go along with the top inside of the Russell 2000 and last Friday uh, what we got for the Russell 2000 cash index for the equity future contract and for the IWM was confirmed sell the D point patterns out there this is the SMH ETF this still has a way to go before it would complete its A to B equal CD pattern and I'll leave you with this and this is a tool the parabolic SAR tool uh, one of our listeners Garo use it all the time oh yeah where i found that it really helps is in taking a look at the spot volatility and when it's going to go ahead and make a change in trend out there these blue lines and the dots out there that i've got the blue lines actually show us when in fact we have a bottom inside the s p 500. now two of the last uh, three times they have worked this red uh, vertical line is when we get this parabolic star dot on the bottom and that identified the last top out there you can see right now we got a parabolic star top at 1419 that's going to change tomorrow so i think folks should tune in at 11 o'clock and we'll review this chart then fantastic steve thank you so much for coming on it is uh great as always thank you you bet jacob Take Folks, care. Mastering Probability Newsletter, you got to get it. 11 a.m. Eastern Time, you got to be there. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. 
an amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we just had Steve Rhodes on, and again, that was fantastic. If you want to check out that archive, make sure you visit TFNN on YouTube. Make sure you give us a like, subscribe. Helps us out a lot. We are going to keep pumping out good content for you. Again, that is Mastering Probability Newsletter. If it is your first time subscribing to the newsletter, you got to check it out because it's risk-free. You don't like it for whatever reason. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee, and that is for sure. Uh, like I was saying, that the market today is a little bit sideways. I think we're all kind of waiting for the CPI report on Wednesday. That is going to be, you know, super interesting to kind of see. Probably have a lower energy in the volatile category, which is nice. Um, I still, from what I'm reading and seeing, that rents are still somewhat high. Uh, cost of living is still somewhat high. So it, you know, we'll have to wait and see, essentially. And I, I think this is, <clears throat> this market kind of holding its breath right now and just kind of wait to see what happens. Uh, on some interesting news, I spoke, uh, maybe like two weeks ago, about how the Biden administration <clears throat> was was making new rules in order to cut down on these kind of hidden fees uh, that that airlines have, and I think everyone likes that. Well, now they're suing the administration over this rule that makes the fees easier to spot, which should tell you something. So let's just read through this just because it's kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> so as the U.S. airlines are suing to block the Biden administration from requiring greater transparency over fees that the carriers charge their passengers, saying that a new rule would confuse consumers by giving them too much information. <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta sip real quick, this is crazy. During the ticket buying process, U.S. Transportation Department said Monday that it will vigorously defend the rule against what it called hidden junk fees. So American, American Airlines, Delta, United, and three other carriers, along with their industry trade group, sued the Transportation Department in a federal appeals court on Friday, asking the court to overturn the rule. Uh, the trade group Airlines for America said that this is going beyond its authority, this department is going beyond its authority by attempting to regulate private business operations in a thriving marketplace. I'm, you know, if, if your 
company or your business makes money off of not being super clear about what's going on. You know, like I've been talking about this, I'm in this like war with Amped Fitness. I'm still waiting on the call today. I've bugged them every day for probably about a few weeks. Nothing back. And that's part of the business model, right? It's just kind of like hazy, like how do I get out of this contract? Um, and this happens all around the country. And so if, it's, if your business is based off that, like maybe you need to rethink what you're doing or kind of what your main point of income is. This is really telling, I think, right? I don't know. Anyways, let's keep reading a little bit more about it. Airlines go to great lengths to make their customers knowledgeable about these fees. This is what the Airlines for America says. The ancillary, uh, ancillary excuse me, fee ruled by the Department of Transportation will greatly confuse consumers who will be inundated with information that will only serve to complicate the buying process. The agency estimated, this is the Transportation Department, the agency estimated that the rule will save consumers more than $500 million a year. Uh, that is just, I don't know, I think that was just kind of a crazy thing. When, it, when, it, when the news came out, I was like, see, that's awesome. I think, you know, as a consumer, you want to know what all this, like, nickel and diming is everywhere. I'll even give an example I had. <clears throat> this is when I was in high school, and a teacher of mine, her husband had ended up in the hospital uh he something happened to him and the military stopped paying for the health care and then his, the company that he worked for which is a big private contractor stopped paying as well so they needed to start paying out of pocket and she wanted to see where all of the charges were coming from and she had told me you know they're charging something like 15 bucks and this is back in like i don't know 2013 uh charging 15 bucks just to have a nurse come in and uh you know apply like a tissue to him and it's just kind of, you know, when you break it down, it's just, uh, it's kind of crazy. Anyways, I think this is, I think it's cool that we have this going on to make these fees a little bit more transparent. And um, hopefully, you know, it'll kind of force the airliners to, I don't know, kind of fix it. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about the big news of the day, which is GameStop. Uh, wow. So up 71% right now. It was about 110 earlier. As you can see here, uh, wow, so what happened? Well, Roaring Kitty, who is one of the big guys besides for deep value, uh, you know, these are the big guys who were, who were trading this and doing the short squeeze so many years ago. He had posted an image on Sunday on X of a man, the memes called locking in, where you're kind of chilling and you like gotta lean forward to do something, it's called locking in. Anyways, that's the point of the meme, and uh, he had GME, right? And this sent things crazy. So he followed that tweet with a YouTube video from years before when he championed the beleaguered company, GameStop, saying, that's all for now because I'm out of breath. FYI, here's a quick four mini video I put together to summarize the GME bull case. That's what he kind of linked. Anyways, this shot up, as you can see, exponentially, and uh, I think short sellers have lost something like a billion dollars. Uh, so far on this, which is pretty crazy. This is coming from AP, so. Monday's opening bell appeared that Roaring Kitty had reignited the phenomenon as shares of GameStop more than doubled. At midday, shares are trading 60% higher. We're at 73.83 right now. Uh, it's the biggest intraday jump for GameStop since the meme craze of early 2021. Uh, yeah, it went up to like $400. Anyways, this will come back down, of course, every time. Let's see if we can go back however many years. Yeah, so I'll put 127.5. This must have split or something. Because uh, I remember it being far higher than that. Anyways, and then this slow descent. I remember being on, what is it, uh, Wall Street Bets. And I think we were somewhere like around this area. And I was like, okay, guys, like, what's the short plan on this? Like, what, what is everyone doing? And I got like slurred at for it. I mean, there are people out there legitimately who thought this was gonna be something to hold and obviously they get completely destroyed by this. It's, it's not a good company. It's business model is bad and uh, honestly antiquated at this point. I mean, you know, everything's gone digital. I've, I've harped on this about so many different things, but video games were like one of the first to go digital. And uh, so, I mean, now you have a company that is selling physical copies of something that is mainly purchased digitally. And then not only are they selling those copies 
those hard copies, they, they have brick and mortar stores for it. And you can go in and they try to sell you a bunch of junk or whatever, but it's not a good business model at all. Uh, and so anyways, this is what this is. If you got into it at any point, I would probably get out of it pretty quickly uh, because it's gonna go back down without a doubt. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Okay, welcome back, folks. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Looking at this article from Bloomberg. Okay, and it's about U.S. inflation and home price expectations. Uh, those are picking up in uh, the New York Fed survey. But before I talk about that, I wanted to look at some of the things with, with office space. And some of the issues, okay, here it is, wow. All right, I'm gonna throw this over here. I'm gonna take a look at it. So this is Fort Worth's tallest building sells for 12.3 million at auction. Now I want you all to take a guess at what it sold for prior, last time it was around, maybe like a few years ago. Well, that number is 137.5 million. So Burnett Plaza, the tallest building in Fort Worth, Texas, has been purchased via foreclosure auction for 12.3 million just three years after it was sold for more than 
The 40-story behemoth was bought back by Pinnacle Bank Texas in an auction held on the steps of the Tarrant County Courthouse on Tuesday as a great business deal. Pinnacle had claimed uh, in public filings that the tower's former owner, Burnett Cherry Street LLC, an affiliate of the New York-based Opal Holdings LLC, defaulted on a 13 million loan used to purchase the building in 2021. The bank bought it back with roughly 12.3 million credit bid, just uh, 12.30 per square foot. The second is considered the largest with over 1 million square feet of commercial office and retail space, according to the website. I don't know what they're gonna do with this. And another crazy thing as well that I had learned because I know uh, people in the industry is uh, yeah, you have like the LLC, these these small private equity groups having it. Banks obviously have them on the balance sheet, but then um, insurance companies as well tend to buy a lot of these large, you know, retail space buildings. There was one in New York, uh, like obviously I'm not going to like say who it was, but they had purchased again like at the super inflated rates. Um, and then, and then now the value of that, that building is completely gone. And, you know, they're using that for cash flow. I mean, they're insurance companies, right? They can't be, like, super risky with their ass, with, with their, um, what they invest in, not their assets, but what they invest in. And, uh, but then you get something like that, right, where you have this really uh, obviously overinflated value of buildings. I think this is actually, you know, kind of really low, you know, what, about 13 million, 12.3 million. Uh, but still, I, I think <laughs> there's, there's some problems going on in this sector, and for whatever reason, they haven't been realized yet, um, but it's it's going to come out as well. And again, too, if you're not familiar with like how insurance companies uh, do some of their you know business or operations when they invest in other things, you should really look that up. There was one in, I think it was St. Pete, Florida for sure. I, I can't remember the name. It was like UBS or something. You know, a billion dollars. This is the value of the company. And uh, they just made bad investments and lost the money, and they just closed down. And people were out of insurance. And I just, I didn't realize actually how common that was. And those guys would probably go and do the same thing again. Um, it's kind of crazy. Anyways, most recently appraised for $104.5 million. So this is what's important to understand, right? So obviously this is really undervalued, this $12.3 million. This is just, you know, at the auction. But still, I mean, you know, appraised at $104.5 when it sold for, you know, what, $100.5 37.5 million, that's still a, quite a bit of a, of a cut, right? Anyways, I don't know how they're going to, I don't know how they're going to change these either or what they're going to use them for. I, I don't think people are going back to the office the way they were prior. There's this conversation around, you know, converting them into apartments or whatever, but that's not going to work either just because they're not built for that, right? Um, it just doesn't make sense. And uh, so I don't know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with those, but I, I still think that's a, a big issue uh, and a big loss is not realized yet in the economy. So I'm not sure what will happen uh, when we get to that point or really what the breaking point will be. Uh, anyways, we can take a look over here at this Bloomberg article. Uh, it says U inflation, U.S. inflation, home prices, expectations pick up in New York uh, Fed survey. Near term inflation outlook in April rose to five month high. Anticipated home price growth reaches highest since July 2022. Homes are expensive. They're up like 40% since quarantine, the average value, which is insane. And I don't know how they expect people, you know, the common person to afford that, especially at the interest rates we have now. It's very bizarre. Uh, anyways, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, so the U.S. consumer expectations for inflation and home prices rose in April while perceptions of the labor, labor market weakened, underscoring an easy backdrop for household finances and the cost of living. Consumers expect prices will climb at an annual rate of 3.3% over the next year after hovering around 3% for the past four months. And this is from the Fed uh, of New York. That marked the highest reading since November. Anticipated home price growth rose at a similar pace the fastest advance since July 2022. Uh, the data followed a string of reports that have indicated sticky inflation and a relentless run-up in home prices. Another thing that's crazy with the home prices too is you <clears throat> are having people kind of buy at like variable rates on the mortgage, right? And I think they're anticipating that it will, you know, go down the interest rates. But the problem is, is like, is this sticky? It is, is inflation truly like sticky on a long term? So we're going to have higher rates, like these elevated rates that we have right now. 
And then what happens if for whatever reason it somehow gets worse, some unforeseen thing, let's say China smacking us with a bunch of tariffs or something. Now those people who bought those rates are going to be in a super bad position. Anyways, data out this week is projected to show U.S. consumer prices still rose at a stubborn pace last month, and Shelter has been consistently responsible for boosting measures of inflation. The New York Fed survey mirrors recent findings from the University of Michigan's poll of consumers, which showed year-ahead inflation expectations in early May rose to six-month highs. Longer-term inflation outlooks in both surveys also picked up. Consumers also anticipated faster price growth for gasoline, food, medical care, college education and rents, according to the New York Fed survey. Meantime, uh, in the meantime, views of labor market worsened, with earnings growth expectations decreasing and the probability of higher unemployment, unemployment rising. <clears throat> I mean, this is what the Fed's literally trying to do, so it's not kind of out of the realm of possibilities. Respondents were also less confident in their ability to find a new job if they lost a current one, falling it to the lowest reading in three years. And this is like the human cost of all of this, right? This is the human cost, essentially, of this kind of quantitative easing and then quantitative tightening. And this idea that we need to make the job market, you know, tighter. And that works, you know, on numbers. But, you know, you're going to get a vast amount of people in the U.S. who struggle, who make bad decisions because they're struggling. I mean, that's scientifically studied, right? That people under financial stress make bad decisions. It shrinks the brain. It's insane, right? And uh, I, I don't know. It's just a shame that we're in this situation, right? And I don't know what the answer is. In reading things like, you know, U.S. homes being up 40% on average since, you know, quarantine is, like, sketchy. So, I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, I'm going through it today. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's take a look at what else we have going on here in the market. I wanted to pull up. Uh... Oh, here. Stay, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back. I have the article. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. 
Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, welcome back, folks. No more market lamentations. Let's take a look right now on this short segment at Sweetgreen. Now, Sweetgreen did pretty well on Friday. Uh, better than expected revenue in the fiscal first quarter. Let's take a little look right now. Obviously, that jump was from about 22.39, and we're trading at 32.10 currently. It's about a little bit under 35%. So Sweet Green shares surged Friday after the company topped Wall Street's revenue expectations for the fiscal first quarter and raised its full year forecast. The salad chain also announced earlier this week an expansion to add meat to its menu for the first time. This is groundbreaking. Salad chain reported $158 million in revenue. Beating the LSEG consensus estimates of $152, revenue jumped 26% from $125.1 million in the year earlier period. Uh, the company reported a net loss of $26.1 million, a loss of $0.23 cents per share uh, in the year-ago quarter. The company's net loss was $33.7 million, which is a loss of $0.30 cents per share. Sweetgreen also raised revenue and adjusted EBITDA guidance for the full year. Shares of the company are up 179% so far in 2024. I had never heard of this company before, uh, to be honest with you guys. And, well, okay, let's just see here. How much are they selling a salad for? You want to take a guess? Oh, these salads look pretty good. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it's probably something, well, obviously, it's dependent on where you're at. But uh, sure, it's pretty expensive. But it's weird, again, you have this, you'd think, like, craft salads and everything is kind of, like, more of, of a selective purchase, right? Maybe one that's a little bit difficult in a time where the economy is rough, but I, I think we just have this V thing going on regarding people who have money and, and they don't. Uh, folks, thank you so much for joining me today. I will be back with you tomorrow as well. For Tom, he'll be back Wednesday. You can count on that. We have Tim Ward on tomorrow. Then we have, uh, I think, Basil on at 10 tomorrow morning. Folks, we will see you then. Take care now.